Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your post-race edition for the 2019 Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring. The sun was out, uh, the fans turned out in their droves and they were treated to an epic contest. And I don't use that word lightly or undeservedly, it was a phenomenal Grand Prix. Uh, Charles Leclerc on pole position, Max Verstappen alongside him, the youngest front row in Formula One history, and what a show they put on. Verstappen with a dreadful start, put him back through the order, but incredibly in front of throngs, not just of Red Bull fans, but of the orange army of Max Verstappen Dutchy nutters. Um, <laughs> he put on one, I think one of the best races we've ever seen Max Verstappen drive um, to win to win uh, here at the Red Bull Ring. First victory since their return to Formula One for Honda. Uh, an incredible contest, the crowd roaring, Leclerc devastated. A sketchy move, some might say. They had a great battle for a couple of laps and it was all clean when the move finally came. Did Verstappen open his steering? Did he force Charles off the track or should Charles have defended that inside line given that's exactly where Max had gone on the lap before? The stewards, of course, are discussing it right now. Hopefully by the end of us recording this, we'll have an answer. But for now, your top three, Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Valtteri Bottas, who was there or thereabouts, but Mercedes just didn't have the pace on a day when Max Verstappen roared. What is it about this place, what is it about you that just draws that kind of performance out of you? Yeah, I don't know. I, I like the track, but you know, I like a lot of tracks. But uh, the car was performing really, really well. Um, of course, we didn't have the best starts, but uh, from there onwards, we just stayed very calm, and um, yeah, we could um, we could slowly get back into our position, and then especially on on the second stint, because on my first stint, I had a flat spot, so it was not ideal. Um, yeah, we just started passing the cars ahead, and um, after I passed Valtteri, then I could I really started believing in a, in a victory, and yeah, we went for it. Got to talk about the move. A great fight with Charles, obviously, towards the end. Watching you two side by side was fantastic. And then the move that sealed it. Talk us through it. Racing. That's how it's called. Otherwise, it's better to stay at home. I don't know what to say. Um, I'm going to let you do the, the, the talking. Uh, how do you look back on what was almost the, the perfect race? Yeah, uh, we had to cover for Valtteri at the beginning uh, when we stopped. So we stopped uh, pretty early compared to uh, Verstappen. Uh, he went a bit longer. And then towards the end of the race, I'll let decide the, the stewards about it. In the car, it was pretty clear. I haven't seen the images from the outside. Uh, sometimes it's the same, sometimes it differs a little bit. But in the car, it was, uh, yeah, I felt like it was unfair. So, but now I need to see the outside image to see. Does this hurt more than, than Bahrain? Uh, yeah, probably, because, uh, yeah, 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 probably. Hard day out there for Mercedes, but uh, you kept your head high and uh, and drove as hard as you could. How difficult was it? It was difficult, yeah. We suffered a lot with the overheating today of, of, the, of our unit. Um, actually, uh, yeah, the amounts of lift and coast we had to do to, to keep the temperatures low, it was getting pretty difficult to drive, and that's why I couldn't really attack, couldn't really defend that well, so it was bit of a survival game but uh, so in that sense pretty pleased to be on the podium uh, but for sure we can do it we need to learn from you know it's we, we had no chance to fight for the win today not quite the day then for Charles Leclerc not yet anyway Sebastian Vettel started down in ninth after having car issues during qualifying but fought back now during the race we weren't sure exactly what Ferrari were doing. They were on the soft tyre at the start and seemed to be looking after their softs far better than Mercedes were looking after their mediums. And yet, when Valtteri Bottas pitted to get off his mediums, Ferrari immediately reacted, bringing in Sebastian Vettel. And the team weren't ready for him. They didn't have his tyres ready. It was a dreadfully slow stop and put Seb right back on the back foot again after the advances that he'd made in those early laps. Later in the race, he made a second stop, went back onto the soft tyre and blasted through. And had he not gone a little bit wide over the last corner, might even have caught Valtteri Bottas for that final podium position on that last lap. One more lap, he would have done him. A fascinating race, a gutsy, really phenomenal race, I think, from Sebastian Vettel today to make up for that qualifying disappointment. P4 at the flag for him uh, on a day when he 
yeah, I think we should rightfully be, be very proud of the way that he drove. I think we were very quick on the first stint. Once I was in free air and sort of settled into a rhythm, I think we were the fastest of that four, first five cars. Um, then we pitted quite early to put pressure on, but we uh, had a poor stop. Um, yeah, after that we, we were set back a little bit, so we yeah, came back. But I think on the hard tyre I wasn't as happy after not too many laps and Max could put uh, more pressure on and uh, it was quite easy for him to follow. So he had more pace in the car, I believe. And uh, yeah, then we uh, diverted. I think we should have diverted two laps sooner. No point to fight Max that hard. I mean, I tried to keep my position, but uh, we, in the end, we just lost time. So I uh, could have uh, maybe reacted a bit sooner and uh, gain a lap or two to then get Valtteri. Did you enjoy it? Because yeah, we did. I did. I, did. Uh, I would have liked to uh, take a piece of wood with me from the podium, but um, uh, overall, I think it was good fun. I really, you know, I really enjoyed it. It was just uh, chasing people in front, and that was quite nice. P5 for Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes were going for the perfect season. They would have equaled McLaren's win run had they run well, won here uh, this weekend. They couldn't. Valtteri Bottas third. Hamilton could only manage fifth fastest, having picked up damage on his front wing. Uh, needed a wing change at his one and only pit stop. Yeah, it's not a track on which they traditionally go well. And as you're about to hear from Lewis, he wants answers as to why. It was a hard race for, for you guys, though, wasn't it, uh, today? Uh, at what point did you feel it just kind of turning away from you? We knew already before the race started that we would be in trouble. Those guys were pushing flat out all the way. We couldn't do that at all. So when you're doing 400, 600 meters of lifting coast, that's why we were there. It was that much today. Was that and that was is that circuit specific temperature specific? What made what made that difference today? Yeah, it's just it's ambient temperature here. It's it's such uh, we've struggled for years here. I don't really understand why we haven't prepared for this race particularly, but um, we've been struggling in that area with temperature. So um, today you saw the worst of it. We're doing this link in the shade because it's very hot. But given that Steve's such a pro with the camera, you probably won't be able to notice any difference in the colouring. Is that right, Steve? That's the theory. What a day for McLaren, what a race. Um, Lando Norris, at the start, he's up fighting with Lewis Hamilton uh, <laughs> and Max Verstappen and, and all of the top guys. It was a phenomenal start for Lando and he was having a great time. Didn't look like he had the car though to, to really make it stick uh, for the duration of the Grand Prix, but he gritted his teeth, he buckled down. And boy, did he ever make it work. Carlos Sainz starting at the back of the field, having taken on new power unit components this weekend, stopped fought his way through. I think he stopped on, on or about lap 40, 41. Blasted his way through both of them in the points. Um, it was a great weekend, a phenomenal job from McLaren and shows just how far they've come and just what a consistent uh, and continual threat they are becoming in 2019. The, the first lap was the best, um, managing to get into P3. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, alongside Lewis down the back straight and into the turn three, so I almost had him, <laughs> um, but just not quite. So yeah, it was a good opening first lap, you know, going forward, attacking and let's say being out of place almost. Um, but after that, you know, I started some fun trying to get past Kimi. But after that, it was more controlling the pace and just trying to get to the end. Great job. Let's bring a teammate in while he's in here as well, because it was a brilliant double team uh, result today. Um, Carlos, talk us through your strategy, your race to fight up from the back into the points. Yeah, it was uh, an interesting one. I uh, took it a bit easy at the start, knowing that I wanted to go long on the tyres. So created a good uh, lap delta, uh, tyre delta to everyone. And after a pit, pit stop in lap 41 or 42, which was I went quite long, it was just an incredible pace. I think at some point I did the fastest lap of the race I saw in the TVs. And, um, and I was yeah flying out there, overtook the whole midfield, half a second, one second per lap quicker than anyone else out there. And and yeah, I was catching Gasly towards the end, but I broke my front wing. And uh, after that, I had to settle for P8. Oh man, a frustrating afternoon. Uh, I, you could see it uh, in the way that you were driving. Did you have some fun though, out there? Yeah, I had a couple of battles, um, which is always nice, but yeah, it was a difficult day. Overall, uh, first stint, yeah, struggling to to get past and make my way through the traffic. And then second stint, I just yeah, pushed too hard at the beginning, destroyed the front tire straight away. And then uh, yeah, after that, I yeah, just struggled with a, with a blister and didn't have so much space. So 
quite hard um, and yeah, still a lot of work to do, but um, yeah, we'll keep pushing. It's good to see with max pace, new upgrades are working well, so uh, we'll have to yeah, see the directions they are going and yeah, on my side just uh, work and, and try to understand this car a bit better. With the way things are going, do you think you're putting too much pressure on yourself to draw things out? Is there a way you can almost detach yourself to look at it? Not, it's not like I put so much pressure on myself. It's more like finding the direction that really suits me. Uh, and yeah, for sure, Max feels really comfortable with that car. It's not really the, the case for me. So some weekend we find good direction, some other weekends is a bit more complicated. Um, but yeah, for sure, there's still a lot of work. So I think there are for sure a lot of things I can take from him uh, with that car that I can change to uh, extract more. And then uh, yeah, we'll keep working because competitive guy and um, yeah, I'm not happy at the moment with my performance so just uh, yeah, we'll keep pushing until I get up here. A good race for Alfa Romeo. Kimi Raikkonen mixing it with the big boys at the start came home in P9 and finally the breakthrough for Antonio Giovinazzi and it's been coming for a few races in the points P10. Kimi, his usual self, never entirely happy um, even when he wins. Giovinazzi, totally the opposite. I mean it's a big day for him. Formula One points, the breakthrough that he needs and the hope that this untaps that latent raw potential that exists within the Italian. I feel so good finally, you know, uh, after a uh, difficult race. Also, this one was really difficult. Uh, Perez was behind me all race, uh, gave me a lot of pressure. But, uh, you know, I won't really bet this point and I give 105%. And I think it was the maximum we could do. McLaren was just too fast today. But yeah, to carry the points, we need to be really happy. We need to keep working on this, uh, on this way. And I'm sure uh, it's the right way. So we need to just keep pushing. Well done, Kimi. Uh, start of the race certainly looked like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, we just didn't have the speed to stay there. And uh, then, you know, it's a balancing act to try to keep the tyres alive long enough to um, and go fast enough. But yeah, uh, a bit shame on that. And it felt like... Like we had more speed, but uh, in the end, obviously not. Tough weekend also for racing points. Um, didn't quite have the pace in qualifying. Perez um, got caught out in traffic. Thought he should have been higher up, but in the race itself, frustration. Again, you know, they're such great starters. They're such great racers. Sometimes strategy can help them out. Didn't today. Lance Stroll, P14, couldn't get past the, or couldn't get on terms anyway, with the Renaults. Checo Perez, P11 at the flag so tantalizingly close to the points but just not enough come race day yeah um, just just in close to the points once again um, I think there is uh, things that we can improve obviously um, I think the weekend all in all was was well maximized uh, so yeah we just have to to keep working hard we know we are not where we want to be so hopefully in the coming races with the upgrade that we're planning to bring uh, after Silverstone we can be a bit more competitive. After the shot in the arm that was the French Grand Prix for Renault, back to earth with a bump this weekend in Austria. It was not an easy weekend for them at all. Um, after qualifying, Nico Hülkenberg uh, said that there was just a, an, an inherent issue with the car. Now, was that down to a design flaw that had been accentuated by the track, or was it down to just something that, that's track specific and, and won't affect them anywhere else? They said they would find out during the Grand Prix. P12 and P13 at the flag suggest there is uh, yeah quite a lot of head scratching to be done in the week between now and Silverstone. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo was P12, we caught up with him. Definitely wake up on Sunday with a lot of optimism and no matter how the weekend's gone I'm like filled with a bit more hope um, but once once we got going yeah I think the the reality of our pace all weekend had set in and even the first lap um, yeah it was just struggled, struggled to keep it all together, um, nearly went off a few times and just yeah, fought, fought the car a little bit too hard this, this weekend. So, yeah, we'll try and figure it out. I think as, as a team, it's important to, yeah, I guess be honest with each other. And I, obviously they know they can do better with the car, but I, I believe I can do better with whatever I've got. And yeah, I, I, I'm not perfect yet and I, I definitely want to be. So uh, there's things I certainly want to look at myself on and, and just address and yeah, just clean a few things up. So this weekend wasn't, wasn't that smooth. Um, but yeah, otherwise uh, we'll throw a smile on, keep everyone uh, keep everyone's heads high, and I think yeah, be honest, but then move on with optimism and uh, no need to be negative for too long. It's it's one bad weekend, but uh, we'll figure it out. 
Uh, another team that had a difficult weekend, much like Renault, much like Racing Point, Toro Rosso. Uh, struggled really all the way through the weekend and did not have a very happy race. Both Danny Kvyat and uh, Alex Albon ultimately battling with those Haas F1 cars with the, uh, well, with the Williamses uh, as well during that contest. Yeah, uh, not, should we say, their finest weekend. Not exactly the most enjoyable race of my life, but um, we saw it coming yesterday. Uh, we qualified, it was carrying a lot more downforce as well. And uh, yeah, today in the race was just sitting dark, plus managing some power issues. I don't know what was going on there, but there was part of the race where I had quite low power and uh, out of the corners. So kind of managed to reset it with many switches. It was okay in the end, but uh, yeah, the race uh, is just not our race. It's not for our team. Haas qualified fifth for the Austrian Grand Prix under Kevin Magnussen. They finished. I did have it and I've forgotten. 50, I think it's 15th and 19th, which seems batty, but it... No, it's 16th and 19th. Grosjean 16th, Magnussen 19th. Um, even with the penalty for Kevin Magnussen, even with him having to have a drive-through penalty because he stopped a little bit too far forward in his pit box, it's an unbelievable turnaround. We, we've been talking all season long about this, this team that has this amazing car for one lap but can't put it together for the race. Today was mad, like, literally mad to see that Kevin Magnussen in a car which had qualified fifth couldn't compete at times with the Williams that locked out the last row of the grid. That's Haas's reality. Difficult afternoon, uh, really didn't get any pace, uh, just, just no grip in the first few laps and then no pace and uh, no balance neither, so really tried hard to fight the cars as, as hard as they could. Photo was going to spin 15, 20 times. Just didn't get any grip, didn't get any balance, so we need to, we would work, we would find, I'm sure. It may take some time, but obviously there's something that we're not doing quite right. How does a car that qualifies fifth end up having the pace of a Williams? That's wrong. We didn't have the pace of the Williams. In the opening 10 to 15 laps, you and George Russell were same same pace. I was a bit slower. You were a bit slow, okay, okay. How, I mean, do you understand how a, a car that's top five is now fighting with a car that can't get off the back row? No, I don't. I don't understand it. It's very strange. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know where to look. I don't know what to say. It's uh, really confusing. And so, to Williams, who had actually quite an interesting Sunday, because if you looked at the timesheets, for a lot of that Grand Prix, their times were comparable with the Toro Rossos, with the Haas F1 team cars, at times potentially even with uh, the Renaults ahead as well and the, uh, the Racing Point cars. There are little signs, little green shoots potentially of recovery here for the team. Whatever the reasons, whatever the circumstances, they held their own here in Austria. Um, and I think despite the fact they know that perhaps it's not uh, gonna translate to every track, reasons to be cheerful, reasons to be proud for a team that's really had a hard start to the year. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. I wasn't really expecting that. Um, managed to do Robert and uh, Danny Kvyat at once, which was uh, surprising and nice and then um, managed to hold up Magnussen in the sort of the latter half of the race. So, uh, you know, we're, we're obviously still a long way behind, but uh, some positive to take from it. And your lap times remained competitive throughout. I mean, we were watching, obviously, the timing screens and, and the pace of the car was, was on par with, as you say, the Toro Rossos, the, the Hasses and those guys around you. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, pushing absolutely flat out every single lap and uh, I'm glad some people noticed it. Um, but like I said, we just need to be patient now and wait for some, uh, some more downforce to come to the car. And that is your lot from Paddock Pass here at the Red Bull Ring. Sweltering Red Bull Ring. Uh, it's been a great weekend. For none more so, though, than for Max Verstappen. Stewards have met. Stewards have... Just... And that was a fantastic Grand Prix, mate! Um, well, we were just wrapping up. And now you run over. Patricio Awards. Hello. Mate, um, that was a... What a run. Crazy, right? Ah, uh, yeah. No, he earned that one. After that start, he earned it. He did. He yeah. totally did. You've had a hard weekend in F2, getting used to the tyres and everything. How was that? Um, it was like learning how to drive all over again, to be honest. It was, it's so different to everything else that I've driven. So um, the way, the hardest thing for me was finding what the car wants. 
um, and really getting the feedback off of the off of the steering wheel. So that that was the biggest thing for me. Race one was like Tokyo Drift, uh, but race two I thought it was a lot better. We started last and we we made up like seven eight positions. Yeah, your early laps are amazing. But then some people put new tires in the end of the race, and then I think we got two or three people got by us. Um, at that point, it's impossible to block even with you know with with new tires behind. But I. For a first time, I don't think it was that bad. No, you did good. Are you coming back for more F2 or is it now Super Formula all the way? Uh, so now the priority is Super Formula um, and and I hope I can I can come to Super, I mean to Formula 2 and maybe do a couple more events. That, that, sh that should be, I think, uh, a very good ending to the season for me. Lovely. Thanks for coming in and interrupting. Oh, no, Great stuff. Good to see oh, you, dude. Good see you Take good care. Good luck. We'll oh, see you in a little bit. You. Patricia Award, who we mentioned in the pre-race show. Wasn't that nice for him to pop in? What were we talking about? That's it. Max Verstappen. Patricia, of course, part of the Red Bull lineup and hoping one day to join Max Verstappen in the team. Verstappen on that incredible form. The stewards deciding that the move that determined the race was within regulations. He didn't force Charles off. Charles on the outside ultimately took himself off and around. So Max keeps the win, and as Patricio said there, uh, richly deserved a hell of a race, a hell of a drive. I think Charles will be disappointed, of course he'll be disappointed, but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that today we got a glimpse, well no, I was going to say a glimpse of the future. It's not a glimpse of the future because it's now, it's right now, the two drivers that we expect to, you know, sort of scythe up the next decade of this sport, fighting tooth and nail for a Grand Prix victory. What a mega time. Uh, for the sport uh, on the back of, let's be honest, a couple of less than stellar races. What a brilliant, brilliant contest. And now we go to Silverstone, home of the British Grand Prix. Uh, can't wait to get there. Can't wait for you all to join us. Thanks for following along this weekend and we will see you next time.